one of the viewers of my channel sent me an email um, a couple of weeks ago and you know at the time I didn't think there was a way to do what they were asking so I kind of dismissed it and I'm sorry I didn't keep the email so I don't remember what your name was I definitely would normally address you in this video but hopefully you see it and hopefully you'll uh, recognize that this is a solution to what you were looking for before but for the rest of you let me explain what the ask was the ask was um, kind of related to this video up here I did a video that showed how you could tie different audio clips to a click to reveal scenario uh, the only thing missing from it and what this particular viewer wanted was the ability to return to the slide audio and continue to play the slide audio where it was left off. So I think I've come up with a solution for this and I'll share it with all of you today. Uh, I've only done a single click to reveal in this case here just to keep it simple, but it wouldn't be too difficult to take what you learned from this video and apply it to like three click buttons or four click buttons or whatever it is that you're looking to do. So I've just, I've just created a simple more information button. I've put the content into this pop-up, which is just simply two smart shapes. One that is going to be the actual close button. And that's a smart shape being used as a button. And we'll be assigning an advanced action to this. Uh, on enter for this particular slide, I'm hiding this, uh, this particular group. And of course it's set as hidden by default anyway. Uh, the why the reason why I'm I'm hiding it on slide entry is just those situations where you return to the slide maybe from a later slide or a previous slide or what have you so the first thing we need to do is we have some slide audio um, to keep it simple I've made it music so it's very easy to distinguish between which is the slide audio and which is going to be the pop-up audio so I'll play for you the slide audio now just so you can get an idea And the pop-up audio is going to sound like this. Okay, so let's get started by building our first advanced action. That'll be on the more information icon here. So I'm going to go to the properties panel. And one of the things that I'm going to point it out now so I don't forget later, it's really important that you go to your options tab for this particular button and check uh, stop slide audio. And this will interrupt this slide audio and then allow you to play the audio that's going to be associated with this pop up. So stop slide audio and of course uh, when clicked is what you're going to want to select. Now let's go to the Actions tab and we'll go and create um, an advanced action. There isn't any yet, so we'll go ahead and create that. Now this particular advanced action requires us to keep track of where we are on the timeline for this particular slide. So I've already created a variable that I just simply call temporary storage and we'll be using that in this advanced action. But otherwise, it's a very simple advanced action to create. So we're just going to call this uh, more information. But you can give your variable names whatever name you wish. So I'm going to use the assign command and uh, that variable temporary storage. And we're going to use a system variable to populate that temporary storage variable. We're going to use CP info current frame. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to show our, our grouped object here, our pop-up. So we'll just select show and um, I've called it slide pop-up just to keep it uh, easy. And of course that's a, a really good best practice when building advanced actions in Adobe Captivate as you're preparing for it by creating all the objects that you'll need. It's very beneficial to label all your objects so it's easy to find them as you create your advanced or your shared actions. 
The last thing we're going to do is we're going to play the audio. I think a lot of people assume that the best thing to do is to actually attach the audio to the object, but in this case here, playing the object, playing the audio from the advanced action actually seems to work much better. And uh, the track we're going to play is that second audio track with the, uh, the fast hi-hats called Sombrero. So I'll click on OK, and we'll save this as an action. And we'll close this advanced action window. And we're going to create one more advanced action, and that's going to be the advanced action when we close the pop-up. Because what we need to do is we need to stop this triggered audio and uh, also return to that particular current frame uh, current frame number that we stored in temporary storage storage so we'll go to the actions tab and we'll set up uh, another advanced action here and uh, so we'll just create a new advanced action and we'll call this one close pop-up and we're going to hide the slide pop-up. We're going to stop triggered audio because we don't want that to play. And we're going to assign and we're going to use a really cool system variable cp command go to frame and resume. Once you've typed up enough of that, you can just select it from the list. And we're going to assign that system variable with our temporary storage variable. So it's going to populate the, uh, the current frame and resume system variable with whatever we stored when we interrupted it in the first place. So I'm going to save this as an action. We'll hit close. Let's just double check that uh, that I assigned this close button to the right action. I didn't, so let's, I always make that mistake. Always check that when you finish writing a new advanced action that your interactive element, whether it be a button or a smart shape used as a button, is pointing at the right script. But I think we're okay now. So let's do a preview. We'll do HTML5 in browser. So there's our initial slide audio. And when I click more information, it interrupts the slide audio and plays that sombrero track with the fast hi-hat. Now let's close it and see if it returns to the original slide audio at the right point. Perfect. And of course, you could do this all day long. And obviously, at this point, your learners can continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.